OK, uh, determine the number of real and imaginary solutions. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, remember when we're discussing or we're going over um, imaginary solutions and real number solutions, what Descartes' rule of science is going to do is it's going to give us the number of real and negative. If you guys remember, when we were finding solutions, when we were finding zeros, we could find positive, we could find negative, we could find imaginary. So there, there are two different types of real solutions. They can be positive and they can be negative. So we have real solutions. And what I told you guys to do is to kind of create two cases. We need to look at the positive and we need to look at the negative. And based on the number of real solutions, positive and negative, that will help us determine the number of imaginary. So to find the number of positive solutions, all we're simply going to do is rewrite our equation as is. Fx equals negative 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Now, to determine the number of negative real zeros, we are now going to plug in f of negative x. So we're going to do f of negative x equals negative 4 times negative x cubed minus 3 times negative x squared minus 5 times negative x minus 2. Does everybody see how I plugged in negative x? Yes. Now, just because plugging in negative x doesn't solve anything. Now I have to simplify that. So it's very important for you guys to understand, whenever you take a negative number or term and raise it to an odd power, it remains negative. Whenever you take a negative number or power and raise it to an even power, it, turn, it becomes positive. Cubed. So negative x cubed is negative x cubed. Negative x times negative x times negative x is negative x cubed. Times negative 4 now turns into positive 4x cubed. Negative x squared is now positive x squared. Well, positive x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Because the x squared turns to positive. X, negative x squared is x squared, positive x squared. Positive x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Mm -hmm. Negative x times positive, or negative x times negative 5 is now positive 5x. And then we have negative 2. So now, to determine the number of positive real zeros, all we're going to do is determine all the sign changes between the terms, positive to negative, negative to positive. So do you guys see, do I have any sign changes? No. So guess what? There is no positive real zeros. There's no positive real zeros. Well, in this case, yeah, because you're testing the positive. You're tracing the f of x. So if there's no changes for this one, then there'd be no negative. Right. But we do have some sign changes over here. If you look, Brittany, we go from positive to negative, negative to positive, and positive to negative. Now, also remember, when you determine the number of sign changes, you have to subtract your even number. So this is 3 or 1 um, negative. real zeros. 3 or 1 negative real zeros. Now remember, why is it 1 again? Because what you're doing is you're subtracting. Okay, You always subtract 2 or an even number. So let's look at this. Yep? So 3 or 1 negative real zeros. So we're the following. We're going to, let me go and explain. I haven't got, I'm going to explain to the next point. So let's go and take a look at this. Um, Marissa, if we go and look at this, we see we have a degree of what, Marissa? Yeah. What's the degree of this polynomial? I don't know what that means. Okay. The degree is going to be your largest power of the polynomial. It's going to be 3. Okay. Now, Jason, if I have a degree of 3, how many possible zeros am I allowed to have? 3. three right? We have as many zeros as our degrees. That's the maximum number of our zeros. So. Jaden, when we're looking up here, since we have three zeros, let's look. Look at We know that none of the zeros are going to be negative, right? By Descartes' rule of signs, if we have three zeros, none of them are negative. Or we could have three of them being negative, right? We could say the zeros are negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Does that make sense? Right? Those are all three negative real zeros, correct? So they could be all three negative, or we could just have one of them negative. 
Well, if one of them's negative and none of them are positive, then what would the other two have to be? Because we have to have three zeros. Imaginary. So <clears throat> you could have three negative zeros. So basically your, your, oppor your um, opportunities or your outcomes are three negative zeros. Why is it three oh. or one negative? Because it's three negative zeros. Or you could have one negative and two imaginary. There's two different options. Descartes' rule of science doesn't tell you which one it is, but it says it, you're either going to have three negative zeros or you're going to have one and two imaginary. Because you determine the number of sign changes and you subtract an even number, which in this, in this case is two, to give you all of, the, uh, all of the options. So your zeros are either going to be three negative or one negative with two imaginary. There's only one sign change. Like There's one, two, three sign changes. Positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative. Oh, I thought it was just between the terms. Right.